What is going on guys? I am AJ and today we're actually going to be switching it up a bit and doing a PC build related video. I know, crazy. And we're going to be focusing on this little contraption behind me. So stick around and let's discuss this. So a bit of backstory on this machine. A little under two years ago, I inherited this PC from a dear family friend who unfortunately passed away. And to be honest, I had no idea what I wanted to do with it as I had both my main rig and my, at the time, recently built HTPC. So it's been here in the backdrop of my recent videos. And then a few months ago, I stumbled upon several videos detailing how to turn older PCs into network attached storage, and it got me thinking about this guy right here. So that's what we're going to do. To start things off, let's get into the system's current specs. At the heart of it all is a Ryzen 5 2400G with integrated Radeon graphics, cooled by the stock Wraith cooler. This CPU has 4 cores, 8 threads, and currently sits in an MSI Tomahawk B450 motherboard. For the RAM, we have a 16 gig kit of Viper 2800 speed DDR4 memory. And for the boot drive, we have a Samsung 480 gig SSD. Finally, the system is powered by a Thermaltake Smart Series 500 watt PSU. All of these components are housed in the BitPhoenix Nova Mesh TG White Edition case. Side note here, this system was specifically built to play old school titles like Tomb Raider 2, which explains the simplicity of this build and the lack of a dedicated GPU. That being said, I do plan on making slight upgrades as I intend to run this machine 24-7. First, I'm swapping out the stock Ryzen cooler for this VTrue V5 air cooler. While I've never used this brand before, there are a lot of good reviews, so I'll be trying this out. And finally, I'll be swapping out the current PSU for the Thermaltake Tough Power 750 Watt PSU. While it might be a bit overkill for the system, it is fully modular and is rated at 80 plus gold. Plus, it was the best option my local parts store had in stock. With that out of the way, let's do it. And how could I forget the star of the show? Two 10 terabyte WD Red NAS hard drives. Completely forgetting PC Building 101, I tried installing the new cooler without taking the motherboard out, only to fail miserably, prompting me to take the board out anyway. There we go. Questionable cable management aside, I think we're finally ready to move on to the next step. Which involves setting up how the storage is going to work. Now, while there are OS's better tailored to running network storage such as TrueNAS or Unraid, I'll be simply creating a folder to be shared over my private network as I am a complete newbie when it comes to home servers, on top of the fact that Windows is already pre-installed on this machine. Now, I'm going to quickly go over how to create a shared folder, but if I forget a minor step, please forgive me ahead of time. First, open up your internet network settings, select your network, and make sure to set it to private. Then you're going to want to open the network and sharing center, click change advanced sharing settings, and make sure to enable network discovery as well as file sharing. Make sure to leave 128-bit encryption on. As far as password protected sharing, it's totally up to you. Personally, I'm going to leave it on. And since I've already set this up, I don't have to save, but make sure you do. The next step is optional, but makes recognizing your devices easier, especially since default PC names can be a bit long and all the more confusing should you have multiple devices on the network. Open your file explorer, click this PC, then move over to this open space and right click to access the properties. From there, click on Advanced System Settings and select the Computer Name tab where you can change your PC's name. I've already gone ahead and changed mine. Make sure to do this for all PCs you want to share files between. The last step is actually sharing the folder. 
Go to the folder you want to share, right click and select properties. Click on the sharing tab. Then click on the advanced sharing. Select permissions and enable full control. Hit OK. Then go back to the folder's properties and click share. Select everyone from the drop down menu, then click add. Now go to the permission level tab on the right and change it to read write. Hit share and you're done. I do eventually plan on doing a proper conversion to one of the aforementioned OS's but for now, this will suffice for archiving my work and accessing it from any of my devices at home. And as far as the actual storage itself, I'll be setting up both 10TB drives in a RAID 1 configuration. So instead of having 20 total terabytes of storage, I'll have 10 as data will be copied to both drives simultaneously. In the event of one drive failure, I'll still have my data on the other drive. And if both fail, well, I'd be fucked. but let's not talk about that. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you want to see my last build, then mosey on over to this video right here.